Good evening, ladies and germs. I just flew in from the coast, and boy, are my paws tired. <laughs> my car is so old, it's insured against fire, theft, and dinosaur stampedes. <laughs> but I want to tell you. Take my dog, please. <laughs> It must have been one of your better nights. I was in rare form. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. Friends are there. To help you get started, to give you a push on your way. Friends are there. To turn you around, get your feet on the ground for a brand new day. To pick you up when you're down. Help you swallow your pride with something inside. Got to break on through. Friends are someone you can open up to When you feel like you're ready to flip When you've got the world on your shoulder Friends are there to give you a tip Friends are there when you need them They're even there when you want For a walk in the park, for a shot in the dark Friends are there I don't care But friends will care A funny thing happened to me on my way to my cartoon show. And if you step this way, folks, we'll continue with our tour of the Cat Museum. Now this wing honors some of the true heroes of Captum. This is Dr. E. Leopold Witznitsky. This man wasted over six million dollars trying to perfect an inflatable scratching post. Um, and this exhibit honors Buttons, the cat who set the world's horse swallowing record when he successfully swallowed one horse. Tied for second place is everyone else in the entire world. And that's the Klopman Diamond. But what I really want to show you is out here. This lake is very important in the history of cats. There's a legend associated with this lake, if you'd like to hear it. Ah, good, I'll tell it. <clears throat> the legend of the lake, in verse no less. A couple thousand years ago, or maybe even more, a band of prehistoric cats was living on this shore. They were a savage breed of cat you'd never want to meet, and what really made them savage was the food they had to eat. For breakfast they would dine on mud, for lunch a rock or two. Dinner time was quite a treat when serving guppy stew. Each night they eat alleged food, then celebrate and dance. But one was just not satisfied to dine on rocks and ants. A handsome, hungry cat was he, and truly a gourmet. He knew the food he wanted, and he'd dream of it all day. For far across the waters was an island, lush and green. And every day he looked again to drool at what he'd seen. For growing on this isle were the famed lasagna trees, a sight to bring a feline who was starving to his knees. But sadly, the lasagna trees were mild miles out of reach and guarded by a band of wild puppies on the beach. The other cats attempted to drive sense into his head. To make it to the island was impossible, they said. But every night lasagna trees were present in his dream. And finally he knew he had to figure out a scheme. So come the dawn he built a sturdy boat within his cave to take him to the land of all the pasta he could crave. His girlfriend said, You cannot make this trip, I will not let you. If by some chance you get across, the puppy dogs will get you. He said, I'm sick of eating only mud and rocks and guppies. No lake will keep me from my dream, and neither will some puppies. And so with just his bark canoe, some courage and a smile, he launched into the water and set out for the isle. No lake could stop our hero from the food that he did seek. No obstacle could stop him. Well, perhaps a little leak. The ship had started sinking when he gave a little shout and quickly drilled another hole to let the water out. But 
That did not dissuade him, not one moment at a loss. He built a catapult designed to hurl him right across. A slight miscalculation in his blueprints was to blame. He'd figured out the whole thing, but neglected first to aim. Give up, the other cats all cried, and though their voice was heard, he didn't heed their warning. He would fly there like a bird. At first, the wings just wouldn't work, and then it seemed they might. The trouble was he hadn't tied the wings on very tight. It was, I guess, a brave thing and a most courageous try, but cats he had forgotten were never meant to fly. For days he thought and thought and thought and thought and thought and thought, and thought. He'd look out at the island and he'd feel most distraught. For there was the lasagna blooming in the sun to bake and blocking him the puppies and, oh yeah, the lovely lake. He would not be defeated, let a lake stand in his way. He vowed that he would feast on fresh lasagna plants today. He wouldn't jump or sail or attempt to even try. He'd swim to reach that island or he'd perish in the try. He swam with all his might to reach the island in the distance. The other cats could only watch and marvel at persistence. He swam as hard as he could swim to reach the other side. He might not reach lasagna, but at least he'd know he tried. He swam for seven hours till he'd swum his final stroke. <laughs> Waves washed him onto the shore, which is where he awoke. Excitedly, he realized it had been worth the chance. He'd made it to the island where there grow lasagna plants. You've never in your life seen such a happy, happy beast. No puppy dog would keep this kitty from his pasta feast. He swam across the lake, but what he didn't realize was prehistoric puppy dogs were five whole times his size. Pursued by giant puppies, there was one course he could take. Though all his strength had brought him here, he dove into the lake. He never more was seen again. He vanished in his swim. And so to mark his memory, they named this lake for him. They called it Lake Stupid. The End. You shouldn't eat that corn so close to the stove when it's on. Ah, stow it, Piggo. What do you know? I know it's popcorn. <laughs> Gee, I don't think so. I'm reading a great spy novel, and Lanolin made me a pie for lunch. But we need you. You're the only one with enough tonnage to scare him up where we can catch him. <laughs> Sorry. What does he see in that spy novel stuff anyway? Booker, it's not what he sees, it's who he sees. The Orson books are the worm hunt of the imagination. Heavy, Sheldon. Very heavy. Meanwhile, at agency headquarters...
I say, W, are you here, man? Shh! Be careful, Double O Orson. I had the place swept for bugs an hour ago, but you never know. Good idea. You don't want listening devices around. Who cares about listening devices? I don't want bugs around. Yicko bit dicko. Uh, pour yourself a soda pop and sit down, me lad. I suppose you're wondering why I called you, Chair. Not really. I... Oops. Be careful, Agent 00 Orson. Calm down, W. I have a license to spill. Ah, oh, that's right. Well, as you know, last week, our top secret, highly experimental thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device was stolen. Agent 00 Bo was assigned to find it. Now he's disappeared. Hmm. His last communication was from the Casino de Barnyard. This is the work of your lifelong enemy, Pinfeather. A bug! Hurry! Double O Orson! The enemy has left me where! Right up above my office for you! Take that! Oh, interloper! This way, Mr. Orson, sir. Mr. Finfeather has been expecting you. This could be a trap. We meet again. So we do, Mansoor. Oh, Garcon. Chocolate milk. Shaken, not stirred. Allow me to introduce my lovely dining companion, the Countess Lenalyn. I see you have a license to thrill. I thought I had you the last time, Pinfeather. You almost did, but I managed to escape by convincing the police that I was only a circus performer wearing a chicken suit. I have a license to shill. And now you've stolen the top secret, highly experimental thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device. I suppose you have proof that I stole the top secret, highly experimental thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device? I might. In that case, I will have to get rid of you. <laughs> it pays to be well dressed. Let go of me! I loathe you! I hate you! I'm finding you repulsive! Don't try to sweet talk me! Read you, W. Over and out. Follow me, Double O Orson. Why should I trust you? Because Double O Bo is my brother. And I think I know where he's being held. Well, take me to him. He's being held prisoner down here somewhere. Top secret, highly experimental thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device is hidden here too. Oh, the top secret, highly experimental thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device is here. Oh, oh no! Oh. That's my brother. I know it. Double O Bow, are you in there? know that Pinfeather had a license to chill, man. Hurry, Double O Orson. He's triggered the top secret, highly experimental watch you call it. It's hidden down here somewhere and it's set to go off like any minute, man. Where could he have hidden it? Where's the rest of the worms, Roy? What a dirty trick. I know we caught more worms than this. We demand a recount. Huh? I divided them evenly. Uh, yours probably just crawled away when we weren't looking. I've got it! The top secret, highly experimental, thermonuclear exploding Grelbin device is in the milk can! You won't get away with this one, Pinfeather! Pinfeather? Everybody hit the dirt! Of our worms? Roy hit them on the milk can. 
You won't get away from me! You'll pay for your evil deeds, Pin Feather! Hey, I just swiped a couple worms. Orson, don't look at me like that! I'm sorry I stole the worm! You'll pay for trying to conquer the world, you master villain! Orson's caught up in a book again! Truth is stranger than fiction. And Orson is stranger than anyone! Flapjack shortage. Serious lack of pancakes here. Attention, mission control. <laughs> this place appears to be self-service this morning. <laughs> See if I leave him a tip. Ah! It's empty, and I didn't empty it. Police, get him to issue a 708 unlawful defrosting. Help! Carfield, stop kidding around. It's time for my favorite TV show. He's not giving this situation the seriousness it deserves. And now it's time for the Pharaoh of Fitness, Rick Deltoid. All right, okay, men and women, here we go. Time to tone up your torso. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Garfield, how about exercising along with me? Not for all the lasagna in Italy. Listen, for a real workout, come down to my gym, Rick Deltoid's World of Sweat. You may be slightly flabby when you walk in, but I guarantee you'll crawl out in magnificent shape. I cleaned out the refrigerator because of his health food advice. That's a felony in some states, you know. Uh, I think we should go to his gym. We? <laughs> as in more than just you, as in John and Garfield? <laughs> that we? Come on, you've got to get in shape. I am in shape. Round is a shape. I'm not going and that's that. Okay, men, I mean a man and a cat. Say, that is a cat, isn't it? Looks more like a mattress with whiskers. <laughs> I hate a guy whose IQ is smaller than his waist. Okay, first, let's give you a protein smoothie. We add wheat germ, yogurt, asparagus, raisins, cod liver oil, organically grown mud, green stuff, and refried soybeans. Mix gingerly. Here, just drink it down. Oh? No way. Come on. Not a chance. Let's go. Oh? One moment, please. Not bad, could use a little lemon. Now, time for my special intensive care routine. Do you need anything? A stunt man? Let's work out. Before I get through, I'll have you pulling 16 rowboats with your teeth. Not with my teeth, you won't. Well, the francs are almost done, but the steam is just ruining my hair. <laughs> I'd like all 32 flavors on a sugar cone piled up in alphabetical order, please. Nuts? 
Okay, I have to go do my afternoon TV show. Go home and watch it. Yes, sir, Mr. Deltoid. I want to get in shape just like you. I'll do what you say and eat what you tell me. Oh, no. I'll never get a decent meal as long as John listens to Bonehead the Barbarian here. Bye, Mr. Deltoid. Let's jog home, then I'll whip up a health food feast. This calls for drastic action. There's Mr. Deltoid's car, Garfield. Garfield? Garfield, where are you? Go home and watch his show. This is one you won't want to miss. Afternoon, Mr. Deltoid. All right, listen. Do you have the cue cards ready for my broadcast? Uh, the ink's drying on them. They're out in the alley and back. Hmm. These are the cards he reads during the show. And there are cue cards left over from other shows. This one's from a cooking show. This one's from Binky's Birthday Bash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the game is cue card rummy ideal. Look, we go on the air in 30 seconds. I need those cue cards. Oh, right away, Mr. Deltoid. <laughs> Wait a minute, where are Mr. Deltoid's cue cards? Whew, here they are. Well, this should be interesting. And now it's time for the Sultan of Sit-Ups, Rick Deltoid. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to teach you a great exercise. I want everyone to... Ah, uh, honk like a goose and wave their wings in the sun. Here we go. Honk, honk, honk. It's a card left over from a wildlife documentary. Okay, the important thing is to dress well in a basic black outfit with matching pearl ensemble. Now, do the pinky dance. Hop on one foot and rub your tummy. Hey, kids! Yahoo! Now, let's see pizza. Lots of... Boy, it's been so long since you had a good pizza and french fries. <clears throat> Deltoid, this is the worst exercise show I've ever seen. You're fired! Gee, that was kind of unfair of them canceling him like that. I mean, they don't believe folks at home actually did all that stuff he read off the card. People aren't so dumb they do whatever TV tells them. Honk, 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 honk. Well, most folks aren't. Are you? Honk, 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 honk.